I'm Aaron Weintraub, and this is Inside Kurdistan. So this technically qualifies as the second podcast episode I've done on Kurdish musicians. Uh, the last one was with Boran Zaza and her background with classic piano performances, which if you haven't listened to that one, you should definitely check it out as well. Uh, but it's safe to say Aras Kurdi, or Eros, uh, E-R-O-S, as he's changed his name to online, is definitely not the same kind of artist as Boran. There are similarities. Uh, Aras's music focuses a lot on his own background as a Kurd, and I feel like his relationship to his music very much relates to his own diasporic upbringing and and his distance and and proximity to Kurdistan uh, as he got older. Ada studied at a Soviet boarding school from the age of nine onwards, as his father was a political dissident, uh, and his exposure to a myriad of different arts and backgrounds while studying there colored what is now a very experimental and fusion-oriented approach to his music today. Uh, along with the combination of different styles of music to help define the next generation of popular Kurdish music. Aras is also a director, and his songs all come with music videos that often mirror that same multicultural approach that's reflected in his sound. Uh, So with that said, it was a real pleasure talking to him about his background and some of his past projects. And here's our conversation. So yeah, uh, let's start with uh, why you changed your name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I started uh, to make production for another market. What's the other market? To world, I can say. To the okay, all right. Yeah. Let's start with that actually, uh, because <laughs> going through all of your music videos, you you have like an, a very. Uh, almost aggressive uh, 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 messaging towards making it as international as possible. You shot this in Santorini, but it's got uh, the, uh, this video uh, in Santorini, but it's it's got sort of a, a more traditional sort of Kurdish sound to it. And then you've yeah. got uh, uh, Sawar, uh, uh, but it's got rock and roll in the background. Yeah. And then uh, what is the root of you wanting to become such a universal artist like that? Uh Actually, I, you know, like all artists, you know, I want to promote Kurdish music, you know, around the world and uh, show that Kurdish music, one of the, uh, one, I, I, I can't say the best, uh, you know, music in the world, but one of the richest uh, music, uh, you know, uh, in the world. What makes yeah. it so rich? Because, you? you know, because, you know, uh, if we speak about the, uh, Kurdistan, you know, Kurdistan is, uh, you know, all mont- mountains. Uh, so uh, we can start from with the dialect, Kurdish dialects, when we speak, mm-hmm. you know. So if if you look at the mountain, in one side of the mountain, they speak one dialect, the another side, they speak another dialect, you know, same language. And uh, from one side, they sing uh, one style song. The another side, they, they sing <laughs> another style of songs, you know. So because of that, it's very rich and uh, different styles. The yeah. first Kurdish song you sang was Nightingale, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you sing it for me? No, it's like, bul, bul, my dolce, shukhosh. It was, you know, uh, a song for the children. Yeah, and you first started. You first sang it when you were nine years old, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in boarding school with your your brothers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In Russia. In Russia, yeah. How... Yeah. In that time, it was not Russia. It was Soviet Union. It's, yeah, that's yeah. actually kind of yeah. That's why I was asking. What were you doing in the Soviet Union at nine years old? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's all the, depended on my father's political activities. You know, he was in mountain, so we had to leave, uh, you know, Kurdistan and Iraq because in, in that time it was Saddam in uh, Saddam Hussein mm-hmm. it was in, in Iraq, and my father fought against him. And you were with your two older brothers, correct? Yes. So you were, and you were the youngest of the three brothers uh, at the boarding school, yes. correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How uh, could you give me the names and and how old your other brothers were? Yeah, they were the big. Uh, one was uh, Hogar, Hogar, mm-hmm. uh, Hogar uh, Fateh Rasul in Kurdish, and the another one Nazar, Nazar Fateh, 
Rasul, yes. And what did Hogger and Nazar play? Uh, Hogger play violin and guitar. Nazar play guitar and uh, uh, clarinet. Clarinet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, there we go. And you play guitar? <laughs> yeah, I play guitar and uh, percussions. Percussion. Okay, all right. Yes. What, and what? I dance. <laughs> and you dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, we'll get to that in a second. Because <laughs> you do everything. <laughs> no, everything, but I try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you... Uh, you're with your two other uh, other brothers, nine years old in the Soviet Union at a boarding school. Yes. Uh, can you tell me a little more about this boarding school? Yeah, it's uh, the first, it's named Interdom, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and it's the first international boarding school in the world. It was in the city of Ivanova in uh, Russia. So um, it was, uh, you know, uh, they built this uh, school in 1933 uh, for... Uh, uh, children whose uh, parents was killed or who fought against uh, fascism in Germany or in China against the Japanese, uh, you know, occupation at that time. So, so started that school. Where were different people from there? Uh, it was people from all over the world. We begin. Uh, it was like uh, you know, uh, like uh, you know, uh, how can I say in English? Uh, we say. If uh, somewhere in the world it's war, so in that school was children from that uh, country. We say from Chile or from uh, uh, Guatemala or from uh, Angola, uh, you know, or from uh, when it was uh, war in uh, Vietnam, it was uh, children from Vietnam, you know. Clearly that gave you somewhat of a uh, an early start on embracing sort of international culture that's clearly had an effect on you throughout your entire career. Yes, yeah. yes. As I told you, I taught uh, geography, not from the <laughs> map. Yeah, I taught uh, geography from my friend. Yeah, you can just point at a map and be like, oh, there's my buddy over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and still we have contacts. Uh, you know, now they, not all of them, but uh, some of them, uh, live in their countries, so we have contact still. So I have a question, because obviously growing up in a boarding school like that, it's a really tense situation. Yes. You were separated from your family yes. for, what, five years? Yes, Yeah, ni- 1981 to 86, correct? Yes. I mean, and other students, you know, but they don't know whether they're going to see their families as well. Yes. I'm going to transition real quick and say, you're a funny guy. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm you're, not funny. I just <laughs> no. I think uh, your your videos are funny. Uh, you have a very upbeat, uh, 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 funny approach to your art. And I'm curious, did you pick that up at the boarding school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, uh, I not just taught uh, geography from my friends, and I taught uh, their sculpture too, mm-hmm. their songs, their dance. Uh, how they behave, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and it's very important, actually, you know, when you, you know, I, I think uh, uh, if you uh, grow up in 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 usual boarding school with the one nation, it's uh, you know that the child became another person, you know, not 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 like a grow up in the family with a mother and father. Mm-hmm. But if you in boarding school with, the, you know, uh, children from all over the world, it will be more complicated, you know, in your head. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, in that school, uh, uh, it was the first, uh, first, how can I say, first uh, step of my character built, it was built there. <laughs> Yeah. What were some of the other students like there? I mean, were you? How did you stand out from them? How were you similar to them? Uh, you know, we all was. You know, we didn't thought about nationality, about the religion, about the colors. You know, we just was like a brother and sisters there. And uh, you know, I can tell you a lot. I. Uh, I don't know what. I'm going to say it was, you know, very special feelings when I remember, Mm. uh, you know, my childhood in that school. Let's transition to dance real quick. (laughs) Yeah, okay. You referenced when we spoke before about uh, learning uh, uh, salsa and Latin American dancing. Was that your first introduction to dance? 
Uh, no, we just. Uh, uh, you also did ballet. Yeah, yeah, first, first I started with the ballet. Okay. Uh, for three years, you know, you know, you have to go to, you know, in 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 uh, Soviet in that time after school, you know, all children have to go to some course, you know, or singing or, uh, uh, you know. Uh, painting or mm -hmm. you know dancing <laughs> so i went to ballet first then i went for th then i went to uh, uh, traditional dance okay yeah but in that traditional uh, dance what yeah is that? it is uh, you know like a uh, russian traditional dance or uh -huh. georgian traditional dance french traditional dance hungarian traditional uh, latin american dance you can do you can do the leg kicks Yes, <laughs> yes, I can do that. Uh, and uh, then uh, at that time it was popular breakdance, you know, in yeah. the 80s. So we, uh, uh, after the course of dance, uh, we uh, taught uh, to dance breakdance too. <laughs> do you still breakdance? Uh, I can a little bit. Really? A little bit now. Uh, like what? <laughs> I did everything. I know. Unfortunately, it's an audio medium. It's not <laughs> yeah. really useful for you to break dance. I'm just curious. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's take it to your most recent music video, uh, where which is about COVID. Uh, okay. Can you give me sort of the messaging behind uh, that song? Yeah, yeah, the message uh, that in that song, it's a lot of messages. You know, it's about the Kurdish history, about the borders that, uh, you know, uh, those, uh, you know, our neighbors try to put Kurds in the borders, mm -hmm. you know, to separate them. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, they can't put us in the, you know, make borders for us because, you know, we are strong and uh, uh, borders can't separate us. You know, Kurdish, I mean, for Kurds, it was first uh, uh, message. Uh, and the second message is that uh, uh, when it was COVID, uh, you know, a lot of people was separated uh, because of that. So I wanted to show the people if uh, we are far away from each other, but our hearts uh, must be, uh, you know, near, without borders, you know. Uh, and... Uh, in the end of the music videos, uh, you know, uh, if you see, look to the music videos, you know, uh, you see the circles uh, on the, you know, on the, gr on the ground, you know. So, uh, COVID tried to separate people, I can say so. But in the end, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, they found a cure, so they make... Uh, a big circle, it's mean uh, unity for, you know, all people in the, on the world, you know, like to live uh, happy without COVID. <laughs> so I'm going to post a link to the music video below uh, okay. just so that people get an idea of what your description is. But the song is called Daja. Yeah. Spilled milk. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, you, you just say, hey, Daja, you know, it's not, it's, uh, you have... Uh, you must have, uh, you know, it's reggae. You know, it's uh, you have, to must have mood. Well, that that's the thing is, it's because it's, it's an old song. Yes, it, it's traditional song, but I, uh, um, you know, the production is uh, I put reggae style yeah. on it. Well, you do that a lot. You 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 take basically uh, old Kurdish uh, uh, traditional songs and you you put an international spin on it. Could you give me some other examples of that? All my songs is, uh, you know, I uh, make a mixture uh, between Kurdish and, uh, you know, uh, different styles of music. I have reggae, I have uh, pop, I have techno, I have, uh, you know, mixed with the Kurdish music. So the song Sawar, uh, the, my last project, it was the, the mixture of Kurdish traditional song, uh, you know, it's just we can work song we say when mm -hmm. they for a long time ago when they produced uh, burgul they sang uh, that song but i put it uh, rock uh, sound to it uh, yeah and uh, uh, you know rock guitar rock drums uh, and i think it's feel more powerful <laughs> Let's let's go to the the video real quick because it tells the story mm. of 1948 at the yeah. beginning. What was the idea behind making the music video based on that? Yeah, because um, you know uh, Kurdistan, uh, uh, 
the video clip starts with the information that uh, you know uh, first place in the world when people started to cultivate uh, wheat it, it's uh, the name it's now Kurdistan mm -hmm. you know you know it was here so it's uh, not a lot of people know that uh, so it's now it's named Kurdistan so it started with that and uh, It's just show how people lived, you know, it's uh, about the uh, Kurdistan uh, when, uh, you know, still in Kurdistan, uh, it, uh, a lot of uh, different religions lived in Kurdistan still. Mm -hmm. But in that time, it was more, you know, uh, so, uh, maybe bigger so existence, you know in Kurdistan. It mm -hmm. was uh, um, uh, Jewish, Christian, Yazidis, uh, uh, Zarathustrians, you mm -hmm. know, they all lived uh, in peace. It was uh, almost Uh, almost they they lived uh, in peace society because it was not so much uh, uh, politic in you, if we say in uh, a, in small village mm -hmm. you understand yeah they lived uh, in peace and harmony all of them could we focus on traditional Kurdish music for a second because as I said outside okay <laughs> and I didn't mean to offend you but I, this is my take on Kurdish music Kurdish uh, music is largely sad yeah you you told me that it's boring yeah I it's think... not boring <laughs> I didn't say boring come on now <laughs> no no it, it's sad yeah but uh, it depends on the which style of the music if you listen to the you know Kurdish uh, maqam or hayran mm -hmm. you know uh, yeah they are sad because uh, Kurdish history A lot of Kurdish story, it's sad, you know, it's the love uh, stories was sad, the political situation of Kurds was sad, but uh, we have one style of the song, just Kurds have that song, it's Kurdish dance music, mm -hmm. that is very fast, it's like, at, uh, you know, 130 or 120, between 120 uh, to 140, I can say, um, a bit per minute. It's like a techno. Yeah, he <laughs> <yeah. laughs> uh, said it was like being in the club. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, it is uh, a special Kurdish music that's uh, very interesting and uh, uh, it is different from the, those that you think that they are boring. <laughs> Come on now, I'm putting words in my mouth. But <laughs> it is okay. So the Kurdish music, I think, has two things, which is it does have melancholy. I'm sorry to say okay. there is a sadness okay. there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's also a political aspect to Kurdish music. It's very political. Yes. There's a revolutionary history. Yes, yes. Did you grow up with that with your family? Yes, yes. I have one song. Uh, it's named Kurdistan Aman. Mm -hmm. It was written by my brother and one uh, unknown Peshmerga. And then I... Uh, made a new production for that about the Kurdish genocide you know it's dedicated f uh, to Kurdish genocide uh, yeah it's uh, just uh, about the children uh, at school they ask the teacher why we can see the map of Kurdistan in the map of the world mm. he say he says uh, uh, we have uh, Kurdistan in our hearts uh, and then the children decide to make uh, a big party to put uh, Kurdistan uh, map of Kurdistan on the map of the world. When was your first interest in making music videos sparked? When did you want to become a director? Uh, uh, at university, I, as mm -hmm. I told you, I started Moscow State University of Culture, uh, you know, like a film director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At that time, I decided to make uh, short movies and uh, Um, advertisement and video clips and at that time I decided to do that because because as I told you I I, I liked all uh, kind of uh, arts you know dance uh, theater music so when you became a director you have to uh, some you know not some how can I say uh, you have to put together all of those uh, arts to make a movie <laughs> you understand what i mean yeah well that goes back to what you were saying about you're trying to do it all yeah <laughs> where does that drive come from from my childhood i think yeah 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 and uh, 
I think uh, I want to tell a story. So I think if I do all of those things on my own, I can tell that story better mm. because I went through of those, you know, stories. What do you want to uh, tell story-wise in the future? It, I, I have a lot of stories, actually. Yeah, give you me know, some. All my songs, <laughs> I have uh, almost uh, 30, 34 songs ready mm -hmm. with the uh, scripts. Yeah. 34? Yes. With scripts? Yeah. So, you mean scripts for like a music video? Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Because the script, it's uh, part of my, my project. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you look, uh, li listen just to my songs... You know, you don't understand that what it's about. You know, you have to to see the uh, uh, music video. You know, have you always wanted to? Ex have you only ever thought about making music through the eye, like the eye of a director, or have you ever just wanted to make a single and just? No, no, no. I have to make a music video. That's I think. interesting. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, as I told you, uh, another interviews in Kurdish uh, TVs, you know, people, how they make a song, mm -hmm. you know, usual, usual pro producers, uh, composers in Europe, in the uh, Middle East, everywhere in the world. They first or, uh, make melody or make uh, lyric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, me... First, I make a script <laughs> <laughs> and I, I make the song like a soundtrack, actually. So it's more like a musical. Yes, yes, it's true. Oh my so, God, yeah. are you going to make so, a musical? Yeah, so <laughs> I have a script for first Kurdish uh, uh, long, uh, you know, movie. No, yeah. you're going to make a musical? Uh, I, 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 I started to do it 2009. But as you know, musical, it will take a lot of money. You know, yes. it's big production. And, you know, I'm not in Hollywood <laughs> to do that, um, to afford me. That you have production. Hollywood in your heart. Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was trying to do, I was trying to make a connection with the other yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think um, uh, I had, uh, you know, the script for uh, first Kurdish musical. It's ready from 2009. It's ready. Yeah. But I couldn't do it. So I tried to make little musical. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, as you saw, maybe people can look at uh, YouTube. Its name uh, is musical short movie. Yeah, its name Gazneke uh, Khapagyan. Yeah. So you can look at it. It was from 2004. And this is where you met your wife. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes <laughs> Could yes. you tell me about that? Uh, yeah. It was. Uh, I met my wife before that shooting. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I met her before that shooting, and. Uh, we make, uh, you know, we became, uh, she became my wife after the because shooting. Because the wedding's at the end of the music video. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I mixed there, you can listen to the song, Khapagyan. It's a mixture of, it, uh, the, uh, the music is mine. Uh, the lyric is uh, uh, mine and my cousin and one of my friends. Uh, but it's... Uh, modern, we can say modern uh, pop rock with the Kurdish solos. Yeah. Do you have any desire to make just like purely Kurdish music in the future? Is it always, do you think, going to be that fusion? Uh, no. Uh, if I do uh, uh, exactly Kurdish traditional music, uh, it's very interesting actually. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have uh, maybe bigger ambition with my project I want to uh, it's like my character you know it's mixture uh, between everything <laughs> right you know so I try to uh, mixture Kurdish music with the Latin music or African music so in my next project we you're gonna see uh, <laughs> the I can say uh, the real character of my style okay all right uh, also, uh, you have a philanthropic aspect to your music yeah. and your career in general. Do you have any organizations that you're working with right now? Uh, yeah. Not right now, but before I work it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before, not now. Like with who? It was uh, one organization. When I was child in mm -hmm. Russia, in Soviet in that time, we worked with a lot of, we made concerts for, you know, a lot of uh, 
places to to uh, how can I say to uh, you know in the char- uh, ch- charitable concerts you know yeah uh, uh, so last it was in 2014 I worked with the joint Kurdistan help uh, what what was my name I, I don't remember what was it was the organization's name joint help for Kurdistan okay yeah I worked with them I, and I made concert for the children in the camps you know I was the first artist who made concert for children in boarding school in Erbil. Oh, I see. It was 2004, I think, or 2003. So you went back yeah. to the boarding school. Yeah, <laughs> because you know, because I thought uh, they feel, you know, when I saw them, I, you know, it's uh, remind me my childhood. Yeah, probably. So they, yeah, so I, I wanted to give them power that they gonna believe in the, themselves, so they can be artists they can be what they want uh, so I was there yeah yeah mm. I'd like to think there's a nine-year-old who saw Aras <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna start his own career yeah down the line. well Aras thank you so much for joining me today thank you I appreciate it it was nice to talk to you too <laughs> yeah cheers <laughs> I'd really like to thank Aras Kurdi uh, for stopping by to talk, and thanks to you, of course, for listening. I've included links to some of the videos that we discussed in the description below. Inside Kurdistan is brought to you by the Kurdistan Information Network. You can check us out at kurdistanin.net. And be sure to also subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks again. I'm Aaron Weintraub, and this has been Inside Kurdistan. Inside Kurdistan.